Hey, welcome to Hope Chapel. Uh, during the coronavirus, this is Sunday morning. This is Joseph Mabe coming to you uh, actually live on Facebook and recorded on our website from downtown Keene, New Hampshire, Hope Chapel, 667 Main Street. Hey, God bless you. God bless all my friends. Hey, life is good. Life's amazing. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a couple things. One, you get a message from Hope Chapel. Uh, it's going to be a, a really great sermon. You're going to get some time to pray together collectively. I think we're going to have over, we're hoping over a thousand people praying with us today. And we're going to say some prayers that are going to make a huge difference. Uh, we're going to inspire you with a testimony. And for some of you, the reason you're logging on is we actually have a contest where we're going to pay you a hundred dollars. If you can guess all 10 Disney quotes, that's right. Usually when you are, uh, you come to church, you expect to put money in the plate. Well, I hope you put some money in our electronic plate, but that's not the point. The point is we're going to pay you a hundred bucks. If you can figure out, uh, which quotes I'm using in my message from Disney movies, because you know, Disney is all about fun and you know, people are so down and depressed and discouraged and worried. Hey, let's have some fun today. All right. So uh, we're going to be live streaming and uh, it's going to be great. So uh, good morning. God bless you. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be a son or daughter of the Most High. Some of you already are. Some of you just might become so today. We're going to have a good time during this time. And so uh, I'm just going to start with a word of prayer and then we're going to uh, go and uh, have some fun, be inspired and, and uh, touch the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless every person watching right now. I pray that you pour your Holy Spirit on them, that you would wake them and shake them, that you would rock them and sock them. Oh God, I pray right now that today would be amazing, that you would lift their spirits. I pray that you would shine your blessing and make them prosper and give them hope, laughter and love. Lord Jesus, you love humanity and we agree, Father, that you love your people. And so today I bless everybody watching and let you let 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 there be a miracle and a joyous time in your life. Amen. If you agree with that, say amen. So also as we're going through this, it would be helpful if you um, liked this as you're going because as Facebook, uh, as you interact and make comments, um, first of all, I can see them and I'll, I might talk to you. Uh, but second of all, it will just make our broadcast larger. So um, wonderful. So just as we go, click like. Um, so here's the name of the contest. As we go, uh, I want you to text um, the word Disney to a number. I'm going to give you the number. And if you text the word Disney to this number, then uh, it's going to ask you for your information. And then you can enter your guesses and you can get that hundred bucks in your hot little pocket. So it would be this phone number. The phone number is 603-392-7511. So you want to text the word Disney to 603-392-7511. And uh, what we'll do is I'll mention that a couple more times throughout your, throughout the message so that you get that. But um, text Disney to 603-392-7511. So right now, uh, I, we have a special treat. I want you to hear from a good friend of mine that I totally respect. Um, Greg Corbin and I, we have been to the wars and back over the years and uh, through family stuff, church stuff. And um, he is a very godly husband and father and he's learned a whole bunch. And I just want him to share just a small portion of his testimony with you. Greg, why don't you come up here? Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, never thought I would be in this uh, situation, <laughs> talking to my church family and those around the world uh, online instead of here in person. Um, we live in crazy times, don't we? I mean, this is a time where we really gives us a time to reflect on our own lives, um, as really we're faced with, you know, our mortality in all of this, right? And it also gives us a lot of time to spend at home with our families. And one of the things that was happening uh, in, our, in our family is that GJ decided, um, hey, this would be a good time to 
look at all our old home videos and get them into a, uh, on a hard drive so that we can actually see them and they're not going to get lost um, being stuck on old 8 millimeter media. And so we've been watching a lot of that lately and it's reminded me of the silver linings in my life. And um, I think at this time we all need to hear and have some silver lining, be reminded of some silver linings. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So as I see this verse, I just decided for this morning that I'd like to just do a timeline of the silver linings in my life. So to start off with, I was born in 1974, and that was a very tough year for my family. My, my uh, grandmother died, actually both my grandmothers died that year. Um, my grandfather had a heart attack, and my youngest brother, who was just the next one older than me, who was 18 at the time, um, actually drowned while my mom was pregnant with me. So it was an incredibly tough year for my family, but yet the silver lining was that I was born and my mom told me that because of my birth, it was really what kept her sane. Um, 1989, my father died when I was 15. And the silver lining in that is that it really caused me to rely on God, my father. And it really caused me also to step up and become the man I am today. 1993, I had a high school sweetheart and I went off to college. And as with many of those high school sweethearts, when you go into the next stage of life, it ended. And it was devastating for me. But the silver lining in that was, it was through that, that God basically caused me to become born again and really draw to him in a new way that I had never drawn to him before in. 1998, uh, Stacy and I have been married for three years and we had struggled with infertility. And it was, it was then that basically God used a miracle in our life to, for us to get GJ. Um, I'm not going to tell the whole story. Some of you have heard it already. Uh, but basically, I was, we were in church, and the pastor up front said, there is someone here who is infertile. And then as soon as they said that, Stacy fell to her knees. And nine months later, we had GJ. Um, 1999, Meredith was born. And she was born different. But it was, there was incredible amount of miracles. She went through umpteen surgeries. I can't even remember how many. And through all of those, uh, God moved and God showed us how real he was, um, including the most notable one, the most scary surgery when she was just a few weeks old. They had to have um, surgery on her skull. And God sent us an angel, a literal angel to be with us. And her name was Rama. I mean, how perfect is that? And she stayed with us and encouraged us um, through that time. 2002, we were looking to adopt. We always wanted to adopt about half our family. And we thought this was the time. Of course, even though it was time in our family planning to adopt, as with most young couples, we were broke. We had no money. So the, it was just a daunting thought. How in the world are we going to adopt? Adopting costs thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. But again, we put our trust in God, and God moved through our friends, through our church family. He made it all happen. And not only financially, he also made it happen through providing us a whole family, a whole Brazilian family that was able to walk us through every little detail of that adoption process from people here in the States to other family members who are actually in there in Brazil who actually took care of Zach and Sam from since birth. Um, Sam was very sickly and that woman stayed with her, was stayed with him 24 seven, making sure that he had the nourishment to get better and be healthy. 
um, all the way up to a translator in the family that knew English. I mean, it was just amazing. 2000, 2001. So this was actually right before the adoption. My chronological got a little bit, a little bit off as I'm thinking about this stuff. But in 2001, we were in our, our home in Minnesota and we were in the middle of redoing our roof and a tornado came through and ripped off we weren't completely done yet. We had tarps over the areas that weren't done and ripped the tarp off and it was literally raining in our house. And I never felt so helpless at that time of how to, of being a provider. And here I am, my family's getting wet inside the kitchen. Um, but God used that, he used it to remodel our entire house. And, um, and, and we, were, we were able to sell that house much easier because it had been remodeled uh, for when we moved here. 2003, uh, Stacy wanted to move to New Hampshire and I was not feeling it. I, I liked Minnesota, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of change, um, but yet for the sake of our marriage, I did it and I moved. And God used that time. Uh, he opened up doors, he allowed me to work to telecommute for five years straight from my current company in Minnesota, which is really, especially back then in 2003, I was unheard of, especially for in my, my field of engineering. Um, but it worked out and, uh, and it gave me an incredible benefit of being able to be a father who was working from home and I could literally walk out my door 10 feet and see my kids whenever I wanted. Um, especially when my kids were young, it was, it was perfect. 2003, um, also when we were moving into the new house here in Swansea, uh, just before closing, wouldn't you know it, the well died. And we were moving out here, we were so financially strapped and taking on a new well in order to close, which was a requirement, was just not gonna happen. Uh, and so things looked desperate and the person who was selling us the house, it was an estate. He really loved us, he loved our family, and he floated us alone himself to get the, the well fixed. He said, I don't even want the well fixed. He said, I want you guys to have a brand new well that's clean water, and it was a lot more money than what we needed to do to fix the problem. But he said, you know what, I want this for your family, and he gave us a, he floated the loan for us, and not only did he do that, he paid for half of it himself. Uh, let's see. Also, then when it became time for, the kids were getting older, uh, we were starting to think about how we are gonna school these little critters. And uh, I actually, at the time, before I came to Hope Chapel, I was part of a different community, and we were trying to open up a private Christian school and I was on the board of that and things were moving along and then all of a sudden wham it came to a complete halt doors shut and there we were with uh, you know our plans of how we were going to school our kids were completely down the toilet and so it was through that we learned homeschooling and um, homeschooling has was an amazing time for us to be a family again and be able to raise our children on our own 2005 the twins got lead poisoning in our house and uh but god used that as well and we were able to um we were able to totally redo our whole house and and it didn't cost us a dime we got a new kitchen we remodeled um got all the lead out of our house uh again god uses god can do anything 2008 i lost my job and and I was, and I gained an amazing new job with security and benefits. 2005, Ben was born and he almost died in my arms. Uh, as I'm holding my son for the first time, he stops breathing. And what's the silver lining in that? It happened on my watch. <laughs> that could have been Sid's. I, I could have took him home and he could have died in his crib and we would never have known. 2006, Stacy and, and Naomi were rushed in for a C-section, into a C-section. She had become preeclampsia, had preeclampsia. And uh, again, 
we would, the silver lining on that is we were in an amazing facility. They were prepared for it, and, uh, and we and Naomi and Stacy came out okay. In 2019, GJ was forced to come home from Japan for things out of his control, and what a blessing it's ended up being. Here he is at home in the middle of this crisis, and we don't have to worry about what's going on over there in Japan. So, again, I want to go back to our, our Bible verse, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. He certainly, I can see that in my life over and over again. And this is not a complete list, let me tell you. This is just what I came up with this morning. So I encourage all of you, do the same thing. Make a list. You've got plenty of time sitting at home. Go throughout your life chronologically. Think about all the things that God has done in your life. Things that maybe you, you, you didn't, you just kind of bypass. I think we all kind of do. We just kind of don't give things a second thought sometimes. Give it a second thought. Go back Go throughout your life and see where God has moved and where he's left his footprints in your life. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. The truth is, Everything that happens does have a purpose, and God makes amazing things happen in the midst of crisis. You know, Christianity flourishes in difficult times. People of faith arise and wake up and are reminded, and they're shaken, and, and uh, just wonderful things happen in times of crisis. So, again, if you're just logging into Facebook or you're uh, looking at our website, we have a contest today. As I preach and teach and as we pray... Um, we want you to, uh, can somebody hand me my page? I can't reach it. Um, we need, uh, we need you to log into, uh, or if you wish to be part of the contest to make a hundred bucks, cause everyone needs a hundred bucks, right? I certainly do, but my wife won't let me cheat. Otherwise I would, but, uh, we want you to, to text Disney to this number 603-392-7511 and you will actually be perfect. You will actually be uh, entered into a contest and just in, to enter your information. And also, by the way, we'll send you updates on when we're meeting, what's happening. Uh, and you can always opt out of that later if you, if you want to. But we'd like to keep you uh, aware of the Hope Chapel events. So um, that's how it works. So today, I want to I talk to you about something extraordinarily important. And for some of you, it's going to be obvious, and others of you, I, I really want you to learn to think differently. Um, I want you to take a look at this. This is a hamster wheel. And this hamster wheel, it's, it's an interesting item. Of course, a little gerbil or a hamster or, or a ferret can run around and run and run and run. And this thing is spinning and going, and, and it seems to be a good thing. We have it as an exercise, as an exercise thing. But I was meditating and praying about our society, about my family, about your family, about our church, and I was just considering where our culture is at, and the only thing I had in my brain all week was a hamster wheel. And it is my opinion that it's time for us all to get the heck off the hamster wheel. And I think most of you, without too much of a stretch of imagination, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everything stopped, society stopped, and the hamster wheel stopped. And so now we have to reevaluate. So when I was a kid, I had a hamster. Its name was Dale, because my brother and I wanted, we had a chip and a Dale because of the old Disney, uh, of the old Disney, uh, cartoons and uh, Dale would was a quite a smart a little girl hamster she had a few babies she did eat them but you know it's hamsters and uh, you never know what Joe Maid's gonna say so uh, Dale would get in this little uh, this little hamster wheel not this one and she would run and run and run and I would look at her little beady eyes and she would scan my bedroom she knew that she was gonna get out of that cage and she was gonna make a break for it and she was going to be a free hamster. And so she would eat, she would poop and drink and have babies, not eat too many of them. And then she would get on this hamster wheel 
and she would just run and run and run. And in her mind, she knew she was making progress. In her mind, you know, her heart was beating, her lungs were going, she was dreaming of being out of the cage, and she was running, 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 running. Then she'd get off and she would eat and sleep and then get back on. And you know, Dale never made it out of that cage and she never got off the hamster wheel because she was a hamster. Well, you and I, we're not hamsters. We're children of the Most High God. And our society loves being on a hamster wheel. This hamster wheel is how you get up and go to work every day at a job you hate because you think you're getting ahead. This hamster wheel is our country. It's our nation with all of its crazy practices and policies from both parties that are driving us to economic ruin, even right now as I speak. This hamster wheel is the hamster wheel of 30 years of foreign war, unceasing overseas. This hamster wheel is our crazy busy life that doesn't even allow husbands and wives to go on dates or enjoy their time anymore. This hamster wheel is what causes parents to have children but not spend any time with them because, oh, working is so much more important. This hamster wheel is parents in our country figuring out that, oh, the most, most important thing I can do for my kid is fill his time or her time up with this department and that hobby and this sport and this other thing and then to be a cheerleader and a football player and to do this and do that and run him here and run him there, be a professional chauffeur and do this and do that until you finally realize when the kid turns 18, you don't even know your own kid because you guys are on somebody else's hamster wheel. This morning, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to pray and your prayers are going to be very important. They're first going to change you. And second of all, they're going to change our culture. They're going to change people you love. God's going to use you to make a difference. But your first prayers are going to be to get yourself off a hamster wheel. The silver lining in this whole coronavirus is that it makes you consider your life. It makes you think about getting off the hamster wheel. So what I'm going to do is... Let me see where I'm at in my notes. Um, I want you to think about as we teach and preach and as we pray, I want you to really, really evaluate what is mission critical in your life. Because everyone's considering the fact that, ooh, we're mortal. We have mortality. Oh, what if I catch the virus? What if my mother, who is at risk? My mother is at risk. Um, if she catches the virus, she'll die. Oh, 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 look, the truth is nobody gets out of this life alive. We only have one life to live and it is so, so short. The silver lining in this moment is that you would reevaluate everything that you are doing. And it is so important for you to reevaluate and make the most of this opportunity. Because the truth is nobody here watching on Facebook, watching in California, hi relatives in LA, uh, nobody, nobody knows how long you're going to live. You just don't know. So you have to make the most of every opportunity. Right now, I want to have, uh, I want to tell you that in getting off the hamster wheel, and as I go, just so you know, with the Disney quotes, I'm going to point to the number on my chest, which means that uh, I'm about to give you a quote. And so I'm not going to always interrupt you. I'm not going to always interrupt what I'm talking about, but as I do this, it means that uh, number one is a quote. And I just want to tell you, it might be difficult for you to get off your hamster wheel and have your whole life interrupted and all your patterns of behavior change. Isn't it interesting? I did a sermon, did a whole series of sermons on habits, patterns, and behaviors of living. And, and as soon as I'm done with that message, everything changed in our country. It was kind of fun. But... Uh, Right now, I just want to tell you that today is a good day to try. Can we have uh, Mike, why don't you come up and lead us in prayer? As Mike is leading us in prayer, I, I want you to hear what he says and pray in agreement. Mike. Good morning, everybody. So the first step in evaluating your life is to stop living in fear and perpetuating the cycle of fear that you have. So the Bible verse I have 
for this prayer is John 14, 27. And it's, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you. I give not as the world gives. And do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let it be afraid. So let's pray. God, we thank you that you've given us peace in our hearts. That while everybody is freaking out, that we have comfort in your presence and comfort in, with each other. God, we ask that you just come and be a part of everybody that's listening live so that they can all experience your peace. And for those of you that are listening at home, I ask now that you pray with us, that you list the things that you're afraid of, that God can come and give you peace over them. And I'll give you a second for that. God, we thank you and we acknowledge their prayers. We, we agree with them. We thank you that they've listed off their fears. And Lord, that you're going to give them peace and help them be a conqueror over the things they're afraid of, Lord. We thank you for this. We love your son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. The hamster wheel. Getting you off the hamster wheel. That'll be a new theme at Hope Chapel here. Getting you off your hamster wheel. Some of you want to be married. and You get married. And then you live your life in a manner where you don't get to enjoy your marriage and the person that you love. You're too busy that you can't even go on a date after you get married. You're so busy trying to make the mortgage payments and you're in debt. You're in a financial hamster wheel. The more, you, the more debt you have, the more harder you work. But in order to work, you got to have car payments. In order to you know, send your kid to college, you got to take out more debt and work harder. And pretty soon, the only thing you're doing is you're slaving for a whole pile of debt. Oh, follower of Christ. Get off the hamster wheel. Get off the hamster wheel. Don't be afraid of change. Change that job out. Figure it out. I know some women actually who figured out that instead of working full time and they because they need two incomes in their household, they actually, if, you, if they calculated how much time they're losing and how much money it costs them to work their job, some of them went to a part time job so they could be with their kids. And they didn't change anything economically because the money they saved, they were able to rethink how they do it. And now they have more time with their kids. They have more time for their family and they only work part time. There are so many ways you can get off the hamster wheel of things that are not important. Um, so many Christians are on the hamster wheel of ministry. You're on the hamster wheel of going to church and church meetings and church events. And you talk about this and you imagine this. But can I tell you that your faith isn't about the hamster wheel of going to church. Every single time the doors are open, and yes, I'm saying that, because you are the church wherever you go. And if anything we're learning in this time, anything we're learning uh, is all about the fact that we have our faith without meetings. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have meetings and when Hope Chapel's doors are open or we're live streaming, please watch, please come, be part of our community. That has validity in and of itself. But can I tell you that sometimes... You get on this cycle where that's all there is. You know how many kids and parents walk away from the faith because they just got so sick of being on the hamster wheel. Church on Sunday morning typically is about listening and feeling and thinking. Some prayer, although the truth is most people when they go to church do not really pray. May I, may I challenge you in this regard, that your faith isn't about meetings. It's not about thinking about things. It's not about feeling. It's not about just singing songs and feeling something on the inside. But it's about doing and becoming, growing and talking and, and meeting people and expanding and moving the kingdom forward. I think the best parts of, of our faith do not happen on a Sunday morning. If all we had on Sunday morning... Uh, if all we had for Christianity or for my faith was Sunday morning, I'd be out because I can't do it. I have to actually have my hands dirty. I got to talk with 
talk with people and love on them. So just get off the hamster wheel. We were forced to get off the hamster wheel at Rope Chapel, and I hope that uh, we stay off the hamster wheel. Um, let me just find out where I'm at in my notes because I just got lost. I am. Uh, I just moved the pages the wrong way. Uh, that's the last page. This is this page. Okay, so our faith is all about Jesus Christ. It's about our uh, his living by his message, being filled with his love, being filled with his spirit. That's our faith. Loving God and loving people, changing the world. And so my hamster wheel is stopped and I'm enjoying it. People are, today, they're fearful, they're questioning, they're mad, they're angry, they're inconvenienced. A good friend of mine in Florida is just coming out of her mind with fear and worry and what ifs and be at peace. I'm going to ask Mike to come in a moment and lead us in a prayer of, in a prayer of personal peace um, and a prayer of national peace. But I want to tell you today that you don't have anything to fear. Throughout human history, there's always been interrupts. There's always been times where uh, things happen. There's always been interrupts in our day-to-day -day lives. And those are good interrupts. That's where faith belongs. I want you to be at peace. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding be upon your heart and mind. And may it come upon you. Mike, why don't you come and lead us in prayer? So the second prayer piece is about our nation. And Joe briefly touched on how we've been at war for the last 30 years. And that uh, it's, a, it's been a struggle for a lot of us. And I'm hearing more and more that people think we should go to war with China because of a virus that nobody could really control. So the Bible verse that I have this time is for Matthew 5, 7 through 9. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be ch called the children of God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the children of mercy and the peacemakers, Lord. We pray that you convict the hearts of those that are angry and help lead them into a path that wants to be at peace with the world. God, we pray for wisdom for our people and we pray for wisdom with our leaders. And so for those of you at home, we give you the opportunity to lift up to you the local leaders um, or national leaders and just lift them up in prayer so that we have the best that we can do. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we just ask that you honor the requests of the people praying for our leaders in this country. We lift up to you Donald Trump as our national head and in New Hampshire, Governor Sununu. We, as finite humans, they can use as much of your heavenly wisdom as possible. God, please help lead them on the path of peace. Lead our nation towards peace and prosperity but also we pray for China that in this time they they come to be peacemakers as well Lord we thank you in your name we pray Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you Mike you know our prayers make a difference and when you Stop engaging in gossip and slander and speaking ill or screaming at your fear towards different political parties and different countries. And when you become us, when you remember who you are as a son or daughter of God and you start praying and interceding, everything starts changing. And so we hereby this morning as Hope Chapel and as followers of Jesus, we intercede for broken mankind. We intercede for faith. We intercede for for, for peace and for the healing of the nations. You know, Jesus Christ is Lord of all the nations. And as we spread his gospel, everything changes. And if you're in your house, say amen to that. You are powerful. You are mighty. But you see, the world is in turmoil. And that's why we're here. When the world needs a hero, it's you. 
Boy, I could should have worked a quote out for that one, huh? Um, in the beginning, when this whole thing started happening, you know that China actually thought we had manufactured this virus and sent it to them as part of our trade war. And then the genetic markers proved that wasn't possible either on our end or on theirs. I've heard some for some top top experts. Today, people are talking uh, about uh, punishing China. You watch any news and you get the, the head of the CIA say, we're gonna punish China. How ridiculous. Listen, I know that normally, I know that normally you don't want to go into politics or anything. This isn't about politics. The Church of Jesus Christ, we are called to be peacemakers. And so we are called to dial everybody's emotions down. And we're called to be reasonable and look at the situation outside of it. We are called to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will inherit the earth. Listen, today people want to talk about punishing China. Stop. Just stop. It's not right. Talk about ramping up our military and going at it again. That's ridiculous. Stop. The same military that has been ground down by 30 consecutive years of wars overseas, primarily in the Middle East, with even currently in our country, over a million war veterans not getting the help they need in their scarred body, mind, and spirit when they were serving our country. Listen, let's be reasonable. Do not preach punishment. Do not talk war. Do not beat the war drum. Blessed are the peacemakers. They will inherit the earth. The Apostle Paul once said while visiting another nation in Acts 17, from one man he has made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And God marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. The Apostle Paul, in, in trying to spread his, uh, his understanding of Christianity and, and the good news of Jesus Christ, started with the fact that humans are all from the same family and that God has a plan and a purpose for all of us. And every nation is important. It is God's plan that every nation would seek him. Now is a good time. Now is a good time for, oh, let me think of a nation, Italy. Now is a good time for Italy in the midst of their pain. They had 10,000 people die so far um, in the midst of their pain. It's a good time for Italy to call upon the person of Jesus, not the Pope, to call upon the throne of God, not the Vatican. It's time for the true help from Italy, for Italy, which is not found in people. It's not found in old structures, old politics, old institutions ruled by men who live in shadows. It is time for Italy to rise up and meet the living Jesus Christ that is unbounded by human tradition. It is time for China. If we think about China and their suffering, they're almost done. Thank God. All right. Praise the Lord for that. It is time for China to cry out to God through the person of Jesus. It's time for China to find the Son of God and the harmony that Jesus brings. China is all about trying to find harmony. Uh, my family was just there last year and we were all over Shanghai and outside of that. And they were just looking for harmony and how everything could flow together well. It is time for China to cry out to Jesus Christ. Here's the silver lining. Let China find the Lord. And by the way, there are far, far more born again, spiritual Christians in China than any nation on planet earth. God bless all of China. Our father in heaven loves the Chinese people. I have seen them. They are beautiful and they are precious and they are made in his image. And so many of them are our true brothers and sisters. We love the people of China. It is time for the United States to go back to its original roots of understanding that there is a God that we answer to who loves, who wants us to love our neighbor. He loves us and we need to love our neighbor and care. We need to get off our whole idolatrous issue of money being the most important factor in our nation. But love and loving our neighbor and caring for those, that's our biggest, that's our biggest thing we have to get back to. We're having difficult times. We are definitely having difficult times in our country. But there is good news. There is good news. Because the flower, the flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. May China heal. 
May China bloom. May the United States heal. May the U.S. bloom. May many wonderful things happen for us. Amen. In fact, let's just take a moment now. This is kind of off script. But let's take a moment and pray for world peace. Oh, I know you're thinking, Joe, you're beating an old drum. Come on. Come into the modern era. I think it's very important in the heart of God that thousands of people not die anymore for reasons they have no understanding of. Let's just pray for world peace. Let's just start praying for nations. As I'm standing in front of you or sitting in front of you, um, I want you to, to just pray for any nation that comes to your mind. Oh God, hear our prayer. Oh Jesus, hear our prayer. Reach out your mighty hand and help. Help us, oh Lord, recognize the humanity all around the globe. Oh Christian, pray for world peace. Seriously, pray for nations that come to your mind. Just speak their nation out loud. Speak the name of the nation out loud. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Australia, New Zealand. We pray for all the various countries in Europe. Oh, Lord, we pray for Great Britain to remember where it needs to go now. Oh, Lord, we pray for Russia. We pray for Syria. We pray for Libya and all the people in pain in all those nations. Oh, Lord Jesus, be their Savior. Heal them, oh, Lord. Heal them, oh, Lord. Oh, God, heal the nations. Let this be a time of drawing together. Oh, Lord, I just pray that you would shine your light into darkness, that you would drive away the shadows, that you would expose evil men and evil, evil people doing what they're doing. But, oh, Lord, we pray for peace and we pray for truth and we pray for justice, oh, Lord, for the nations. So today is a good day to reevaluate your life. I just messed my notes up a little bit. I got some order out, but it'll work. Today is a good day to reevaluate your life, to make the most of every opportunity. Are you sitting home just wondering what to do with your time, playing computer games in somebody's dungeon? Are you, are you, are you making a call once in a while, but generally you're disgruntled because you can't run out and get your favorite coffee and sugar? You know, what's really funny is uh, we've declared certain industries and business to be essential. And one of those essential ones is Dunkin' Donuts. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Dunkin' Donuts. Are you kidding? It's where I get my sugar and caffeine rush and fix. That's what it is. But that is not an essential business. That's a addictive business. That's a feel good business for our culture, right? That's, they don't really serve real food, not really. Um, but they have a lot of caffeine and sugar and that makes us feel good. It's time to reevaluate your life. It's time to look in the mirror and say, is this what I am supposed to do with my life? Is this how I'm supposed to live? Is if I die tomorrow, am I good? Am I good? If I take my final dirt nap, if I am done, I am in a good spot. Well, you know, the truth is most people aren't. The reason that you're on this hamster wheel, running, 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 is you don't have peace inside. Can I tell you, there is one way to get peace inside in this time to learn to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, to learn to give your life and all your control to the Lord. Oh, it doesn't mean you don't work hard. It doesn't mean that you don't have goals and try to accomplish them. But if you commit your way to the Lord, he will make your path straight. So get off America's hamster wheel. Get off your life hamster wheel. Reevaluate, assess. You have to look at your past, but you can't be owned by it. You don't go back to it, but you can look at your past for... If you focus on what you left behind, you will never see what lies ahead. As my friend uh, David Britt, who's watching this right now, I believe, uh, used to tell me in college, he used to say, after you come to Christ, don't go grave digging because you might fall in. 
I want you to think about that. Look at your health and your habits. Look at your health and your habits. It's time to reevaluate your health and your habits. Because change is good. It's no good if you survive the virus. Is it okay to survive the virus but die 15 years early because of your eating and living habits? Because you don't go for walks? Because you don't watch what goes in the pie hole? Because you, you just, like me, at some point, uh, you're a food addict and you're getting your sense of satisfaction by what you eat? Or the fact that you're tired so you don't walk and, you know, God gave you legs to be used. He gave you lungs to, be, to breathe. He gave you a, a, an outside to enjoy. And we're, we're a culture that's kind of, we've gone cavemen. We, we build buildings with false lights and we live in dark shadows and we spend our time in front of electronics. And let me tell you, it's a big, beautiful world out there. It is so beautiful. Go for a walk. Go for a walk. Because it's no good to survive the virus and have a crappy life. It's no good to survive the virus and be fine, but die 10, 15 years too soon. Oh, please don't. Please don't. When you get to heaven, what you want to hear is, well done, good and faithful servant, well done. What you don't want to hear is, ha -ha, too many Twinkies, too many Twinkies. Look at your family. Look at the emotional health. Look at your children. Look at your, your extended family, your relatives. Look at your circle of friends. Look at them. Consider them. Is your relationship with them what it's supposed to be? Are you the encouraging voice or are you the critic? Are you the one who can see them struggling or making the wrong decision? And do you scream and yell? Do you point the finger? Do you gossip? Do you go, oh, look at them. What if you, oh, you, you know, we have an accuser. We already have one of those. That's not really yours in my role. When we see people in our inner circle, we should help them and, 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 we should intercede for them and bless them and, and believe better things for them. The Bible says love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. We need to be loving and we need to, um, we need to be encouragers of them, not critics. Some reason, for some reason, uh, our entire nation thinks it's their job, or a lot of our nation believes it's their job to criticize our president and everything he does or says. We just need to stop because what comes around goes around. There is no human being on planet earth that is perfect. And all we like sheep have gone astray. Every one of us, Christian, non-Christian, Hindu, Muslim, whatever you are, whatever you are not, atheist, agnostic, I don't care, joke. Uh, atheist, <laughs> we all fall short. And that's why we have a savior, everyone. We're all in the same boat. None of us are better than the other. I spent personally several years of my life trying to do a very, very important project. I invested dozens of hours every week, more than 25, every week trying to do a particular project. I couldn't push it forward. I tried, the more I tried, the further it got behind. And I used to wake up feeling like a failure every day. I'd wake up in the morning with it on me. I'd wake up thinking about it at three in the morning three in the morning, not getting any sleep because of my anxiety over it. And I want to tell you what this time with the coronavirus has done for me. It's helped me reevaluate. And now I'm going to tell you as important as projects are to me, the most important thing to me are people. The silver lining for me is I have learned and I am still learning how important people are. Some time ago, I met a very, uh, wonderful, broken little girl. And she was walking down a path that is laced with heartache, that you can just guarantee a, a future that would end, she would end in loneliness and brokenness. And it's a path that in our country today, you're not allowed supposedly to add any correction to or try to take them off of. And the only thing I could do, because I was somewhat removed from that person's life, I wasn't my inner circle, uh, the only thing I could do was pray. So what I did was I prayed earnestly for that person. And because I prayed earnestly, I got to have at some point a conversation with them. 
And I didn't criticize them. I didn't tell them everything. Didn't tell her everything she was doing wrong. I didn't uh, tell her about God's judgment. And, you know, I didn't give her some stupid religious spiel. The only thing I did was I told her how great her life could be. That's all. And I cared about her and truly loved that person. And today, that person is walking an amazing life. So healthy, so happy with a bright future. Not depressed, not suicidal, not anything. She became amazing. And some time ago, three or four months, that little person walked up to me and hugged me. And when she hugged me, I felt 15 feet tall. I had been waking up every morning thinking about what I could have done, what I should have done, the fact that uh, this project wasn't happening and people thought I was responsible and, and I couldn't get that out of my head. But when that little girl hugged me, I was 15 feet tall. Do you know why? Because people are important. And for everything that we do and everything we plan and all the busyness in our life, it is people who are important. And that little girl going to heaven and having a fantastic life and finding herself and discovering who she is, that is what it is all about. Hope Chapel exists to give hope to people, not to have beautiful buildings or great radio stations or, or this or that, or all those things that are important, but not as important as people. I hope you understand that people are important. And right now, I'm going to tell you, look to those closest to you, your friends and family. Your family is important. Patrick, can you come and lead us in prayer for our families? Lamentations 3, 22 through 23 says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. Hold it right here. Sorry. Hold it right in front of you. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. In the midst of the crisis going on right now, we can't let this destroy us. We can't let this be our new normal. With families right now, take the time to just spend time with your families, your loved ones. Hold them tight. Show them how much you love about them. Show them how much you love and care about them in the midst of this right now. You can't let this destroy you and break you down because the Lord is never, the Lord will never forsake you or leave you. And if you're feeling alone and depressed right now, just know that our God is in control. I just pray right now that you would just, husbands, just say your wife's name out right, loud right now. Just bless her right now. Just hold her tight. Hold her hand right now if you're watching this. And just simply just say this simple prayer. I just pray that we will get through this. That in the midst of the chaos around us, we'll get through this. That we will be on the same page. That... We will, our marriage will grow stronger through this and that it wouldn't cause division. That we would be on the same page and that we would make the right choice for our family's sake. And wives, say the same prayer to your husband to know that we are going to stand by this together. That no matter what happens, I love you, I care about you, and we are going to get through this together. Parents, if you have kids... Say your kid's name out loud right now. Because your kids are so much in, are so important to you. Say each kid by name if you have multiple. Because they need to hear how much you care about them and how much you love them. Because in the midst of this chaos right now, a lot of families are working from home. A lot of moms and dads. Kids are home from school. Take the time to have conversations with your kids. So at the end of this virus, that you would not cause any division amongst your family but you would grow stronger that you would have a stronger family unit based off of this that it wouldn't cause division among different family members but it would bring unity 
and that you would find new things that would in, that you guys would just enjoy doing together as a family and that would become the healthy structure so take don't take this as a curse that you have to stay home and you can't work use this to spend time with your family because family is so important pray for, kids pray for your parents right now as they try to figure things out with finances and providing for you guys just know that they are stressed out as well as you guys as you're trying to figure out how you're going to communicate with your friends pray for your parents right now pray that they will have it all figured out but that they would rely on the lord just as much as you guys do and that the family would just grow together and in, in love and faith to know that jesus christ is our lord and that he is in control of all circumstances that this too shall pass that mer new mercies and joy is coming our way and I just pray for brothers and sisters and loved ones that are spread out across the world right now. I just pray that you would say their names out loud and that you would be praying for them daily to know that their needs will be met through this. And that you would just continue to rely on the Lord's strength through this. And that you would grow your family structure in this. And that it wouldn't cause division, but it would cause more love in the family. Because right now, love and hope is what's going to get us through. Amen. Uh, Patrick, thank you for praying for our families. And, you know, God knows you by name. Jesus Christ is actually, according to the Bible, Jesus Christ is whispering your name into the ear of God, your Heavenly Father, every day. And so when we speak the names of our children and our loved ones before God, it has impact. It's very important. You're doing exactly what Jesus did. You know, your family is so important right now. Uh, when I was in Hawaii, I've had some wonderful times there. I've been there many times. I have friends uh, who are actually watching now or will be recorded because they're sleeping right now. But um, I have friends that helped me in ministry and they helped me uh, stay being a pastor and helped me figure out my life uh, uh, Ralph Moore, who started all the Hope Chapels, and Rob McWilliams, and Paul McWilliams, and Ernie and Jody, who, who opened their homes to me, and just so many, Guy Capello, a pastor, just a wonderful man. Um, so many of you have been so impactful. Well, I learned from them in Hawaii that, uh, that family is family, and they actually would, would hug us, and they hug my wife and I, and they would say a, an interesting phrase. They would say to us something like, in Hawaii, ohana means family, and family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. And it was true in Hawaii, and it's true now. Um, right now, people are people are hurting, they're sick, they're broken. Uh, Jacob, you want to come forward and lead us in prayer uh, for the sick. The verse that I offer you is Romans 8, 28, which is God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him. So pray with me for the sick, for those who are hospitalized and not doing well, who have been infected by the coronavirus, remind them, Lord, that you are in control and that even this will pass and that there is hope and that these will work out for their benefit for those of you who know people who are hospitalized who know people who are sick say their names aloud now so that you might know and so that god can hear and so that others too can also hear Lord, for those who have quarantined themselves and are lonely, either because they have the virus and they don't want to infect others, or because they are at risk for obtaining the virus due to either old age or other health conditions, Lord, I ask that you remind them that you're there and that whenever there are people gathered in his name even across the internet 
you are there and your presence can be felt, Lord. I ask that you show them your presence, Lord, and that they might feel it. For those of you who know these people who are either quarantined because of they are high risk or quarantined because they don't want to infect others, say their names aloud to let them know that they are not alone. For all of us, Lord, in this crisis who we're worried and that in itself can stress people out and cause them to be sick or vulnerable, I ask that you give us all peace of mind and calm through these troubled times. Amen. God hears our prayer for the sick and here's your prayer for the sick. And so when you're sitting down be at home, be productive, be, be in prayer. Because when you pray, God listens and then angels respond. I really believe that. It's biblical. It's true. Do not be discouraged. Be of good cheer. Your prayers are effective. So this morning, you're not just watching us on, on video, even if it's live streaming, which it is. Hey, God bless you, Linda Phelps and Shannon LeCount. God bless you. Um, your prayers are important and God hears you. And when you mention people's names, he responds directly because of you. And when you get to heaven, it's credited to you as righteousness because you interceded just like Jesus. Um, think about how many prayers are going up all over the world. Try to be, imagine being God and having to sort through a billion at least prayers. I mean, all the time. Well, it's interesting. Um, some people think prayers are kind of like wishes. But they're actually a lot more than wishes. Here's the thing about wishes. The more you have, the more you want. And what we pray is way beyond human wishes. Tim, uh, would you come and lead us in prayer for all the amazing doctors and medical workers and nurses? Um, and um, uh, this is good. Let Tim lead you in prayer. It says in the Bible, uh, specifically in Joshua, several different times, Joshua is talking to the people and he's encouraging them and he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I think this message is crucial to the doctors and nurses and other emergency personnel working to uh, combat this virus. And so pray with me. Lord Jesus, holy is your mighty name. Lord, thank you for all of the wonderful nurses, doctors, EMTs, and, and related group of people that are fighting this thing. Lord, I pray that you would keep them safe and that you would keep them well so they may continue to heal the sick. Lord, I ask that you would give them the supernatural strength that they need to get there, to arrive, to diagnose, to see, to hear, and to act in the best way possible for healing the sick, for seeing things, for, for arriving on time. Lord, I ask that you would provide the equipment they need supernaturally, that there would never be a shortage of masks, and, and um, emergency equipment and that you would continue to supply them even if it's just supernatural in the way that you perform miracles. Lord, I ask that you would give them a supernatural awareness so that they would see things they normally would not see and be aware of things they normally would not be aware of and that people would, as a result, the virus would not spread and be handled. And Lord, I pray that you would give them supernatural energy so that they don't fall asleep and get tired and that they can be there for everybody, they're the patients that they're working with, and also that they'd be rested supernaturally so they don't get tired. I also pray for our police and National Guard. Louder. Louder. Oh, I also pray for our police and National Guard that you would give them the wisdom 
to make the best calls in the moment and that you would give them a good plan for the nation that would result in the best approach to handling this thing. Lord, I pray for the United States uh, emergency services as a whole that you would give it and give us the best plan methodology and we would we would get through this thing and we would handle it correctly that you would guide us in this amen amen i see how all my nurse and doctor friends and i have quite a few now because of my family business but uh, I see how hard they work, and I'm in communication with uh, with at least one nurse who is doing about 17 hours in shift right now in a hospital in Massachusetts, and it's just crazy hours, and they are um, working so hard, and their life isn't easy. So we got to pray for them, we got to support them, and don't just start start uh, start and stop on Sunday morning praying for our doctors and nurses. Hey Marty, God bless you. Um, I just think that we have to really, really appreciate all of our medical people, help them, walk their dogs, buy them groceries. Literally, I, I challenge you that if you know a doctor or a nurse or a medical provider or a trucker or somebody who's part of the infrastructure project and they are out straight, right now we actually have, in Keene, we have warehouse workers working 19 hours a day in some of our food distribution companies and they don't even have time to go shopping for food for their own families. Why don't you volunteer to go pick up stuff for them? I mean, let's bless and help our medical providers and our people who are part of our important infrastructure to keep things going. You know, the people who started working in the medical industry did not necessarily do it to, be, to have fame and fortune. They actually chose a very hard path in life that maybe gets paid a little more than some other, other, uh, other jobs they can have done, but they didn't do that for the money. What they did, they did it because they cared. And what they learned is they have a calling and not just a career. If you're gonna stay in medicine, if you're gonna stay working with sick and broken and suffering people, it's not about the money. It's about the human that you're helping. It's, um, it's a high calling and it's a career because they've learned that sometimes the right path is not the easiest one because they chose to do it uh, out of love and the truth of the matter is greater love is no one than this and they lay down his life for a friend and they are in fact many people in our culture right now are laying down their lives in many ways because they're serving the sick and the weak and the broken and as someone once said love is putting someone else's need before yours Nathaniel can you please come and lead us in prayer for our economy? In Psalm 34, there's a promise that says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in, uh, crushed in spirit. And there's a lot of people out there right now that are feeling defeated. They're feeling lost and hopeless. So join me in prayer as we just pray for people who've lost their jobs, who are feeling like there's nothing left for them. Oh Lord, we just pray right now for the people who have lost their jobs, who have no clue what is next, how they're gonna provide for their families. But we know that you are a God who can provide. You are a God with, who can provide in abundance. You are a God who can meet every single person where they're at and meet every single need. I pray that you're going to give people exactly what they need, whether it be food on the table or having their bills paid. I, I also, we also lift up those people who are out of work that you're putting new opportunities on the table for them. New opportunities, new ideas, new ways for them to take care of and provide for their family. We also lift up those people who are currently still working, those who are still employed, those who are still able to financially provide for their family. We pray that you instill in them a, a heart and a spirit of generosity, that you will activate them as cheerful givers, 
that they're going to desire to help their neighbor, to, to bless those around them, that they're going to bless and take care of their family and their friends and their neighbors and those around them. Lord, we also pray for, for our businesses. The businesses in our community are, are failing and shutting down. People are out of work. I pray that you provide new opportunities for them to, to succeed. That you provide opportunities for them to, to flourish and grow. Opportunities for them to provide work for people. Keep them in business. Think about those people right now in your life who may be out of work. Those who are feeling lost and hopeless. Just take a moment to think about them and, and personally just pray for them. We pray, Lord, that you remove any anxiety, any fear, any uncertainty of those who don't know where their next meal will be. The uncertainty of them feeling like they have no clue how they're going to take care of their family. Or people who are feeling as if they're defeated and crushed. Lift their spirits. Give them joy. Give them peace. Give them hope that you are bigger than their circumstances. And that you can take the circumstances that they're in and you can work it for their good. And that you're able to, to care for them and provide that for them for their every single need. Oh Lord, you are much bigger than everything going on in our economy. You are much bigger than people's personal finances. Lord, provide for, for every need and take care of those people because you care about people so much. Lord, we thank you for everything you're able to do and we thank you for the ways that you've already taken care of the people around us. In your name we pray, amen. In the United States, the truth of the matter is, is that greater than 80% of our population is employed by small business, not by large business, depending on how you measure by the number of employees. And right now there's a whole bunch of small business owners that every time a crisis happens or there's a huge abrupt change, they are left behind. You know, if you think back to the banking crisis of 2007 or the, the mortgage crisis, which really was a gambling crisis, where we rewarded all the banksters for doing the bad stuff and they took the money and then bought up their, their, bought up their competitors, small businesses got left behind. So really, I'm going to tell you at Hope Chapel, we care about those small business owners. I think about Sarah at Windsocket Farm here in Swansea uh, who uh, does a greenhouse and her, she's the daughter of the Ellis Farm in Keene that, that uh, was taxed out of business. And you know, businesses and small businesses and the people they employ are so important. Um, I myself have a, I understand this so well because I have a family business. I have, I work two full-time jobs and um, I know about having to make payroll and having 80%. I've just had 80% of my, my customers delay and not come and not pay me. And, you know, it's, I'm not the only one. Everybody, a whole bunch of people are feeling that. So I truly understand, you know, those of us who are trying to do a successful company to provide for our family to provide for our friends and our staff, and we have to make payroll. Uh, that's a big deal for me too, how to make payroll. Um, can I tell you that all those, that that's really important to God, that these people would, that our, our small businesses would succeed. So I, Nathaniel, I just really appreciate your prayer. Um, sometimes I've tried to start a few things in my life and uh, I don't consider the church that, that my wife and I started all those years ago. Uh, it, it's, that's not a business. That's a whole, we just help start a Christian community. Uh, and it's not ours, it's God's. I hope chapel does not belong to me uh, or any denomination. It belongs to the Lord. It's a, it's a gathering of people. But um, I feel like some of us who start businesses, we've had a, a few failures before we have our success, right? And right now, I feel like success for my family business is, is uh, standing in front of me and it's saying to me, you will always remember this as the day that you almost caught. But you see, faith moves us forward. It moves us forward into our future with a great hope of a wonderful expectation. Because as Greg started off saying this morning, and we're going to be closing very shortly, as Greg started off by saying, there is a silver lining. Don't miss it. 
It's not the storm, it's not the rain, it's not the wind, although those are all blessings in disguise. There is a silver lining with what you're going through right now. And we look forward to our, our future with great hope and great faith and great expectations. Nathaniel, I'm sorry, Patrick, would you come and lead us in a, in a prayer of hope? Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope. Lord, I just pray as we go through this pandemic and or virus, whatever you want to call it, that we would just be filled to know that you are in control, that you are a God who knows our needs before we even say a word, that you knew this you know what's going to happen and we can trust in you because you never leave us nor forsake us. You are a God who goes before us, who has, who works everything else for our good. That in the midst of crisis, in the midst of the storm, you calm the winds and waves and you make our path straight. So Lord, I just pray that we would be filled with joy, that we'd be filled with hope and that we'd be filled by love for our neighbors, as our friends, our families, but more importantly, by you in this midst of this crisis that we would know that our God loves us and that he hasn't forsaken us, that he hasn't left our side, that we are never alone because our God loves us so, so much. And I just want to encourage you guys this morning to know that God hears our prayers, that he hasn't forsaken us and that he will make this go away. That if we believe in him, believe in him even more, that this will go away. Amen. Amen. With God on your side, with Jesus Christ walking beside you, with the Holy Spirit that fills you with his power, the very power that created the universe is living inside you in the person of the Spirit of Jesus. If you're a follower of Christ and if you believe what the book of Acts says, that power is available to us who believe. The very power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is available to us and for us. Allow Jesus Christ to fill you with power. Allow God himself to put his finger in your mind, his hand on your shoulder, and his thumb imprinted on your heart. Oh Jesus, let your power come. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and you will be helped. Because with Jesus Christ, let me tell you straight up, with Jesus Christ, you are braver than you believe, you are stronger than you seem, and you are smarter than you think because he is inside you. Oh, Hope Chapel, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And anyone that's watching from California or the Midwest, right now I'm looking at several of you that are, God bless you. Hey, Bruce and Maria from Nevada. God bless you. Understand that today is a beautiful day. Understand that God's on your side. Understand that Jesus Christ is waiting for you to pray to him, and you're going to do amazing things. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Be strong, be powerful, and be courageous. Amen.